Yeah, big boy fella, at it again. Yeah, boy, yeah. I'm gonna start out by giving y'all the weather, the weather report. The weather report day is um Tuesday, September 24th, currently about 10 minutes to 2 p.m. Cloudy skies, probability of rain is are at about 30-40 percent. Humidity currently at or about 55%. Winds out of the northwest at or about 3 to 5 miles per hour. Yeah! As it stands currently, I'm on my way to Florence, South Carolina. I just left my Upa house in Demersville, South Carolina. I'm going to the FedEx store to take this cable, this internet modem back I got from AT&T. The one that didn't work, by the way. Um... I'm going to take it back down FedEx and drop it off. From there, I'm going to the Chinese store. Chinese grocery store. Pick up a couple of things. I realize my food ain't all... When I cook my chow, right? When I cook my chow, it ain't all of that. And the reason it is because I don't have my, I don't have that kick, touch, in it. So I'm going to the Chinese store to get me something to spice it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Because that's everything I eat have to have a little kick to it. You know, now I'm an African. I am an African American. And even though I, it's very, very rare that I actually eat African American food. Uh, like collard greens and fried chicken. I, I like fried chicken though, to be honest with you. As a matter of fact, I might fry me some chicken later on this week. Certainly not today. Today we got pork chop, pork chop on the menu today. Once I leave FedEx, I'm going to the Chinese restaurant and get me some of those Chinese spices. To put that kick in my Continue on alligator road for seven miles. In my Ronnie style cook chow. Um, um from there I go to Walmart and get me a, a dozen and a half eggs. I didn't realize I eat so much dang on eggs, man. You know, one thing I'm doing here that I didn't do in El Bajo, Texas, Party in Mexico, is that I'm eating breakfast. Now, I'm one of the person who never eat breakfast. Usually, all I do is drink a cup of coffee. That's about it, really. And if I don't drink a cup of coffee... I just go to the and get a, a cold one. I just go in the refrigerator and get me a can of beer and drink that for breakfast. 
<laughs> there's been many more. <laughs> uh, there's been many more as I drink a beer for breakfast, man. Shit, why waste time making coffee when you can just open the refrigerator and grab you one of them cold beers out of there? And that'll get you going. Yeah, yeah, boy. I was talking to somebody over the telephone a couple of days ago. That person essentially said, "Can you wash your drinking a little bit?" <laughs> I said, uh, "I said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I guess." Now, now, listen, here's the deal. Will I ever stop drinking? Probably not. I probably won't stop drinking. I drink beer, way too much beer, and I drink whiskey. Don't particularly care for wine. But uh, usually the whiskey I drink is relatively cheap whiskey. Now, I figure cheap whiskey is just as good as that expensive stuff. Why waste all that money on, what's that, Hennessy, Hennessy? Some shit like that when you can just get some cheap shit. Serve the same purpose, right? But yeah, I probably won't stop drinking anytime soon. Just to make a sh long story short, I don't drink that much, but I probably drink more than I probably should. As a matter of fact, once I leave Walmart to pick up that dozen egg, that's a, there's a, they, they call it here in, the, in South Carolina. South Carolina, you can only get whiskey in South Carolina at a liquor store. It's got to be a state sanctioned liquor store, ABC. I think it's ABC, it's, yeah, ABC Liquor. Or some, hell, some shit like that. Ah, I probably go there and get me another half a pint. Most likely, five dollar bottle. Now I ain't going to see my oopa today. My oopa had his dialysis today, and, and uh, you know, he, 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 it usually is from about. They pick him up at about seven. I would imagine they start the process at or about 8 and finish at or about noon. Um, I was there yesterday. I got I actually stayed there yesterday 4 hours and 40 minutes. 4 hours and 40 minutes. I got there about 7 o'clock. Left at about 11.30. Yep. So I'm just going to probably not go today. I'm just going to, I'm under the presumption, under the, I'm not going to date under the presumption that during his days of dialysis are rough and, he, and when he come out of dialysis, usually he sleep the rest of the day. So that is my excuse. That'll be my excuse for not going there today. So I'm, I'm going to go get this stuff and I'm going back to the house. And finish looking at my YouTube videos. I'm a big fan of YouTube. I'll be looking at that bullshit on YouTube. You know, some of it's pretty interesting. Most of it. Most of it's just crap. But I ain't got nothing else to do so I look at it. It beats looking at network television. And our cable. Uh, cable is just horseshit. I wouldn't pay for cable. I had cable about 15, 20 years ago and I turned it off. I never thought about turning that shit back on again. Not at my expense. I would imagine if they can work out a deal with me in which they pay me to look at that bullshit, I might turn it back on. That's about the only way. Yeah, boy, yeah. Little intersection here. Yeah. 
Yeah, old girl woke me up this morning. I was, they told me that they they told me that the day, the twenty fourth of February, twenty fourth year of September, that they was gonna do spraying in in the apartment, right? I forgot all about that stuff, man. I'm in the bed. I couldn't hear. You know, the bed's kind of far from the front door. I couldn't hardly hear shit. I, then I got up, man. I walked in the living room. I was, somebody was opening the door. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> she said, this is this person is the landlord. She, she managed these apartments. She said, oh, we sent you a mattress saying that we was going to spray today. I said, yeah, yeah, you sure did. I said, uh, yeah, you're right. Good thing I had on my clothes. Uh, she had some guy with him, man. I, I swear to God, that, man, that was the fastest spring I ever seen. He, he said, we only need to do the kitchen and the bathroom. Man. Took that son of a gun every bit of two minutes. Two minutes. Oh shit, they got blight. Here, I noticed them. You know, like most of these road construction sites and shit. And I done drove, I drove big rig more than three million miles in 25 years, okay? By the way. 99.9% of these road construction sites where they're doing construction on the road. 90, let's just say only about one half of one percent do you see black workers <laughs> black workers at those construction sites about one half of one percent which means 99.5% of those workers are not black workers back there I just seen those guys back then looked like 99% of them was black workers. I guess the Latinos, Latinos, Mexicans, I'm sure them dang on Venezuelan that came from Venezuelan, El Salvador and all them places, you know, all them immigrants commonly heard let in the country. Her and Brother Joe. I'm sure them son of a gun didn't come out here to do no dang on construction work. No, sir. They didn't come out here to do no work at all. <laughs> if you're talking about that shit about they, they, they going to do work black people going to do, you forget that shit. They, them folks didn't come out here to work. Hell, you know. They really played themselves. And if I was the Venezuelan El Presidente, if I was the president of Venezuela, I, I'd do the same shit. <laughs> let me tell you something. Venezuelan, let me say it again. Venezuelan is getting ready to become one of the richest countries on the planet. It'll take another 20 years. But it's going to happen. In about 20 years, Venezuela is going to be one of the richest countries in the Americas on this continent. North, Central, and South America. And the reason that is, is because Venezuela's got m more crude oil than any other country on the planet. And that crude oil is getting ready to get sold. The only reason they suffering now is because the United States got tariff, I mean sanctions on them. And they can't sell their oil globally. They can't get the sh ships into their docks. In their shipping port. That, that, that load those sh sh ships with um, crude oil. But all that getting ready to change. It's getting ready to change on the bricks. Brits, the global south, new economic 
economy, which is going to exclude Americans. So America won't have any real relevance in what happened to Venezuelan oil in the next six to eight years. <laughs> and so they're getting all their uh, what what they call it? undeplorable. Well, that's what that's what Kamala Harris. That's what Madam Kamala Harris called them. Undeplorables. They criminals. They're drug dealers. They're, they getting rid of all them people in Venezuela that are are irrelevant. People that can't seem to the, 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 the make it in their own economy. You know they're they're laggers and they're half asses and shit, right? And they send them to the good old USA, and I don't blame them. <laughs> Let Americans deal with them. They just, I mean, I hope, man, I hope nobody don't think they send the best people. You know, shit, man. Here's what make it. They don't. I mean, United States said, okay, we'll take these people, but y'all need to give us some sort of identification of these, of these people so we can get a idea who these people are who y'all send and die him or should I say up him Venezuela said we ain't giving you shit <laughs> we're not telling you we're not sending there's no way United States these people come from Venezuela there's no way United States can access who these people actually is because that information is not shared with the United States by the Venezuelan government. You know, there's a lot of tensions between the United States and Venezuela. <laughs> and, and for the United States, you know, Venezuela just had an election, right? And the wrong guy won the election. I think the guy named Maduro. Maduro won the election and that wasn't the right person according to the U.S. And the U.S. said, no, no, election fraud. Election fraud. Notice how the United States always calling election fraud. And we need a monitor, election monitor for this country or that country, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to America, there's no such thing. <laughs> We don't need monitors, international monitors, to monitor our election, and we don't have fraud in our election. So says the good old USA. But anyway, when Venezuela had their election about a couple of months ago, the wrong person won. And what did the good old USA did? They stole the airplane of the Venezuelan government, and ain't that some shit? <laughs> <laughs> they stole Venezuelan Air Force One. Damn it, boy, you can't make this stuff up. They seized that airplane. Now, it wasn't no big ass plane like Joe Biden be riding in and shit. It, ain't, it wasn't no big plane like the United States Air Force One, but it was, it was Venezuelan Air Force One. Damn. I didn't get out of that motherfucker. Woo! Anyway, let me get out of here. I'm almost at my location. I'm going to drop this box off. Head to the dang on uh, Chinese store here in Florence, South Carolina. Go to Walmart and get me some eggs. I might have to buy some steaks. Shit, I got, I'm, I'm, you know, I bought all that food about two weeks, when I first got here two weeks ago. I probably need to do a little bit more shopping, because I still haven't had any in the restaurant yet. The only time, the only time I bought something outside to eat was um, that barbecue you seen me with on um, last Saturday. <sighs> That's about the size of it. Anyway. Tell everybody, y'all know, I know, I said, hello. See you down the road. Y'all be good now. You're here. Yeah.